Thieves are really cunning and powerful in Dragon's Dogma 2. This class is broken. Out of the four base vocations, it's easily the strongest one to start with as this destructive class gets online right away. However, only if you know what you're doing. That's why this video is a guide to max rank and how to be overpowered even early on, utilizing powerful rosters of weapon skills for different types of scenarios and setting up combos that are insanely lethal, mixing weapon skills and core skills like a true assassin, but also stuff like how to get great gear and weapons early on, how to make a powerful party that benefits your thief the most, and how to actually become the miser thief himself and just the strongest thief of all time in this game. <laughs> So we don't have any time to waste, let's get right into it. Before we get into combat related strategies, we need to talk about two very important tags that any Thief Meister will need to know. First of all, the infinite running no drain stamina tag. As a Thief, you can infinitely run without consuming stamina and this is done by using swift step, animation cancel into a carve, animation cancel back into a swift step and so on and so on. Doing it this way, you will just keep running forever without having to take a break but with just a regular type of running on the right side shows that with this stack you actually run a lot faster too so not only do you not drain stamina whatsoever you also actually move faster start using this stack right now aside from this stack i've engineered a bunch of skill sets for the team however one skill that doesn't make an appearance in any of those skill sets is pilfer or its advanced version plunder not because it's bad no but because it's a loot focused type of skill rather than a synergistic tool that we can use for combat. But for looting this thing is actually fantastic. You can get rich with it, get viable loot, get gear and useful weapons, get rift crystals and even get wake stones. I've tested this skill out on a bunch of targets for the purpose of this video and I found out that if you use plunder on the undead enemies then you can in fact get those wake stones. It is actually insane. To make your test have a 100% success rate however pair your plunder up with your implicate this will guarantee you stealing always going forward you will be based in loot and stealing has never been this fun before let's get into the combat then you want to get enkindled blades as fast as possible. This is going to be your destructive starting ability. You set your weapons ablaze and you go ham accordingly. Enkindled blades also has that initial attack that packs a punch before setting your weapons ablaze. Just abusing this ability, you'll have great DPS right away. Make sure to also get scarlet kisses for your core skill as fast as possible, so your cars, which are like your regular attacks, become a super buffed version essentially by tapping the according button for carve as much as possible. The carve, scarlet kisses, and kindling blades combo is a very powerful combo that is going to dominate those first levels especially because using them carves and scarlet kisses doesn't drain your stamina so we have a very action economy efficient combat loop right here you get two more amazing core skills as a thief swift step and twin fangs swift step works like a dodge that operates at fast speed it is a very swift way to prevent incoming damage which makes it excellent twin fangs on the other hand is your vulnerability abusing core skill see it as like i'm going to annihilate my enemies in style used as a part of a combo with Carve and Scarlet Kisses after you use those for a moment to get the special animation to finish off your targets. It works exceptionally well if you attack your targets from behind too as the epic animation seems to trigger when you utilize those weak spots. But the Thief also gets ways to make sure its enemies get in unfavorable positions through crowd control to set up for those epic one-shot hits. But more on that in a second. As you progress, you'll want to spend your discipline points to unlock this roster of weapon skills in my opinion. The earlier mentioned Enkindling Blades, Helm Splitter, Powder Charge and Ensnare. Now this is what I'm going to be calling my starting levels nuclear destruction roster. Enkindling Blades, we already went over that, but Helm Splitter is an absolute insane ability too. Why you ask? Well look at this, it just does too much damage for this part of the game. The earlier zones are going to be ridden with giants and other types of creatures that extend in a vertical axis, so Helm Splitter is now naturally going to be absolutely fantastic because the taller your enemy is the more hits you will get in. With its reach you can easily snipe any pesky birds from the sky too giving you a very powerful tool right here for that use case too. But it's really not just versus the bigger enemies or whatever is hiding in the sky, no because the damage of this ability also nukes whatever is on the ground. It's just overall a fantastic skill that you cannot miss out on really as a thief so acquire the thing and never look back. 
Then Powder Charge is your AoE ability as a thief and hence why we need it in the roster. It is exactly great for that purpose, especially because you can set it up preemptively and do very fun shenanigans with it like that. And Snare is then basically your CC tool. It can either make enemies collapse completely or control them to fall over, which in turn can lead to monstrous damage. But then Snare is more than just that. It's your get over here ability. Yes, you become Scorpion himself with this tool. And I know you want that. So for example, in Snare your targets, pull them over and CC and then use Twin Fangs to annihilate them instantly. This is a fantastic combo to use versus regular monsters, animals and humanoid types of enemies. The combos that you can do with Ensnare are ridiculous because it's not just with Twinning Fans, you can pair it up with any other melee skill. Or for example, remember how we just got Powder Charge, set it up, then ensnare something right onto your dynamite and KABOOM! Gone for good! But there's more to Powder Charge, it is time to start incorporating your commands too. Use your pawns as a way to manipulate the positioning of your enemies. Set up a Powder Charge behind your team, move back a bit and call back your teammates with the to me command, then while your enemies are naturally going to follow your pawns, explosion a time right here into a complete obliteration. This combo will make even Michael Bay himself impressed. Now as you level, you get an advanced version of every skill I just mentioned. It's just what happens when you rank naturally. It just basically means you get a stronger version of the same skill by for example more damage, more hits, or the skills become more likely to succeed in whatever you want to do with them. You have to acquire these skills though, but it's a no-brainer. Get all these skills. So going forward, I will use the names of their advanced versions to refer to these skills. As you progress, you get more specialized skills that fulfill a certain use case. For example, Gut and Run or its advanced version, Draw and quarter is amazing for players that like to grab and climb onto their targets. It has a very satisfactory feel to it too and it combines very well with ensnare in the sense that it gives you an easy way to trigger it but also with say a skull splitter because it launches you up into the air into you grabbing your target into a draw and quarter. Amazing combo right there. And with that, it also loops back to Powder Blast. As a deadly combo revolving around going onto your enemy's back is first of all using Skull Splitter to get the positioning going for you to grab into a Powder Blast setup while doing damage because you can in fact put the bomb on your enemy's back. And then after finishing that, you can use draw and quarter to get the damage in like that and then finish it off with exploding your bomb. This is a very satisfactory setup and you see it's a continuous stream of damage. You can also incorporate retaliatory damage through easy kill or masterful kill, as this is alternatively a great parry tool. You can trigger it when your enemy is bound to hit you, in which you time it correctly to get a quick turnaround and damage them instead of them damaging you, while also CCing them somewhat. It's easily a great ability if you can get your timings right, but it does slow down the Thief gameplay loop quite a bit if you miss your parries, so it has to fit your playstyle. Now I didn't mention one skill so far and that is Biting Wind, or its advanced version Cutting Wind, it's a really good fast paced ability too and you start out with it but it can also set up perfectly say a cutting wind to get quickly to your enemy damage them into cars into twinning fangs for a quick nuke the speed that this ability provides you is really good and it's always a useful skill to consider too if you have a fourth slot available the thief however can in fact get its ultimate skills very early on too in the nameless village right here talking to the two main npcs in this area will grant you formless faint and blades of the pyre blades of the pyre is like the more damaging version of ignited blades or in kindled blades it has a nice explosion before lighting up your blades that packs a punch in fact it deals so much damage that it hurts yourself too which makes it completely unviable to use unfortunately without using the other skill formless faint which basically negates incoming damage so it negates blades of fire self-hurting tendencies as well making this combo the thing you want to go for formless faint on itself is busted it basically makes you invincible because nothing can hit you anymore as you see in these clips so with proper stamina management this ability is going to be very very powerful obviously. A summary of the different setups with the more specialized ideas that I just went over then are these as following and they are all powerful depending on your playstyle. We have the stylistic assassin with draw and quarter, the can't touch me playstyle with master kill, the ninja with cutting wind and the thief meister with our thief meister skills. You'll see that I definitely do consider skull splitter and implicate as staple skills and in addition I personally like powder blast a lot hence why that is also a recurring skill. I've also dropped my recommendation for the ignite 
United Blade's ability past those initial levels. And why? Well, you will understand when we get to the team and pawn setup. I have not talked about one playstyle though, and that is Stealth Play, which is going to be my final skill set for this video. This playstyle is, however, extremely viable too, and it sets up for solo play very well. It is just a more slow paced, calculated playstyle compared to the others. If you want to play something like this, I would recommend you running Shadow Veil vale in combination with Smoke Shroud, Skull Splitter, and Concussive Step. So, how it works basically is as following You command your team to wait if you have a team, or you can go in solo, and before you do that, use a Shadow Veil vale to make yourself invisible. You then go for those back steps. They will one shot a lot of enemies with the stealth mechanic. And you see it works very well and the damage becomes even better if you can use the Ring of Skull Degree too. You can do this consistently to a bunch of targets. However, if things go south because enemies detect you or something just goes wrong, then you can also reset the stealth basically through Smoke Shroud as it will confuse your enemies in a big AoE radius. So you always have that as your backup tool. Or you can still go for a low bound Skull Splitter through using Concussive Step first into a Skull Splitter and this is a great combo for those enemies that aren't big or tall and that you can get rid of quickly by making sure that Skull Splitter doesn't launch you into the air. And you still have Skull Splitter for bosses too. I really like the skill set that I made for this sub build. It works great and it's a ton of fun too. But with then also the stealth playstyle covered, you can see that the Thief sets up a bunch of combos and facilitates a lot of viable playstyles. But there's another element that can get our Thief to the next level and that is your party setup. For our party setup, I'm going to be strongly recommending a mage as your main pawn. Personally, based on my extensive experience, experimenting for a variety of reasons first of all the mage is a very good support type of class in dragon's dogma 2 it can heal massively to pretty much just fill up the entire bar in one go if you get the skill it can remove your debilitations or debuffs that as a thief you never want to have you want to be as mobile and proactive as possible with this fast paced bursty class so the mage taking care of you like that is absolutely amazing then there are other buffs like increasing your speed protective buffs that give you insane defenses making you even more agile and giving your weapons elemental buffs and as a thief this is a very good boon to have because it opens an additional slot as you now accordingly don't need enkindled blades ignited blades or blades of the fire anymore so that is one extra skill slot to play around with the mage can give you the fire buff but also an additional lighting and ice buff too extremely useful keeping in mind the resistances and weaknesses of your enemies you're not just confined anymore to fire with our main pawn being a mage that then also means that we can customize exactly its skills and thus the benefits and such that we want to play around with for pretty much every encounter in the game because for those that have already played the game extensively you will notice that the world is ridden with campfires and at each of these campfires you can just modify your current loadout as you wish so we get insane flexibility and utility like that by just making the mage our main pawn for the other two pawns i'm going to be strongly recommending at least one fighter or a warrior that functions as a tank with high weight and high height to get a higher encumbrance rate so we can also use it to dump our stuff if you don't know what i'm talking about check my other dragon's dogma 2 video that goes a bit more in depth about the non-combat mechanics of the game and our fighter or warrior can function very well as a tank in combat too and with that takes a lot of the threat from us since we're going to be in melee space too so that's a very welcome thing to have in this party setup then for our final pawn i'm going to be recommending a sorcerer for the ranged nuke and also the auxiliary combination with our mage which will facilitate a nice combo between those two for our augments if you don't want to bother with intermixing augments through different vocations then just using the ones of the thief are great actually subtlety makes you a lot less targeted even if you're right in front of their face so that helps out a lot with not taking hits but if you want to intermix augments then i would definitely run salty and gratification from the thief the latter for sustain constancy from the sorcerer for that really useful 30 percent extra knockdown resistance because getting knocked down is your worst enemy as a thief endurance from the archer for more stamina exaltation from the mage which is absolutely excellent and amazing as you want to have as much stamina at all times as possible and finally i would go for diligence from the fighter to make the combat loop as smooth as possible then finally times two we have gear left now as you progress you can just buy great gear in every new town you unlock and incrementally keep getting stronger like that however if you go out of your way to get some world drops you can get op very early first of all your daggers you can for example get the pelt flares very early on right here great daggers but you can also get spied very early on which are easily going to be the best daggers in my opinion that you can get early without having to walk a lot and they're great due to their x 
excellent stats and them having poison ingrained. Yes, you heard that right. You obtain them in this area, but I hear you asking, you just said without a lot of walking. Well, what you do is take the ox cart at the western part of Fernworth, the first main city that you will get to. This will transfer you over all the way to this western city on the map without you needing to walk over there. So basically, you can just instantly teleport to it without having discovered all the areas in between. Then you can just buy a spine and have a great time. Later on, you want to get the Frosted Edges into Heaven's Key for the knockdown and insane stats mixed with cold and respectively holy damage on top of that. For your helm, very early on, if you go out of your way but still have a condition of staying somewhat close to the capital, I found the Bethali Turban to be absolutely excellent. This headpiece has great stats and has a variety of very useful debilitation resistances which will be higher compared to pretty much every other type of helm that you can get in the vermin area. Then combine it with the Prowler Care Chief that you find here for the silence effect and it just looks badass. For chest, just get whatever is best at the shops. And pants, I would recommend the Thief's Graters at the Nameless Village for that full silence effect. Rings, then I recommend early on to get the Ring of Triumph for only 15 Seekers tokens. An absolutely amazing ring for a Thief. And the Ring of Resolution, which you can farm of Golems for that amazing knockdown resistance. Or the Ring of Quickening for that amazing stamina recovery too, is an excellent alternative too. With that then also covered, you now know everything to be the strongest Thief of all time. Enjoy completely destroying this game. If you want to support the channel, make sure to check out my Patreon. And if you want more Dragon's Dogma 2 videos, then make sure to give the video a like, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts in the comments.